After Jean-Philippe Crasso yesterday, Edmund Otto has officially signed for Red Star Belgrade. In terms of the contract, I'm not sure. It's supposed to be a long-term contract, so I assume three or four years. Uh, Otto did spend the last six months with uh, Spartak Subotica. They play in the first tier of Serbian football after he spent some time with Sheriff and before that, Senica from, um, from Slovakia. So he does have... After not playing for about a year, uh, he has played some football recently. So, which is obviously, I mean, I mean, a good thing. Um, Red Star very familiar with Otto, having played uh, Sharif, I guess two seasons ago now in the Champions League qualifying. So they're familiar with him as a player, his um, kind of strengths and weaknesses, uh, what he's good at, what he's not. Uh, watched his press conference today. Very happy to be here. He's very familiar with the club in terms of like he's played against them. So he knows what the atmosphere is like. Uh, so happy we're finally here. This is about a year and a half after the first rumors of Edmund Otto coming to Red Star started. He's officially here. Uh, what I like the most about him, he's, he's young. He's 23 years old, I believe. But he has Champions League experience playing with Sheriff. He has experience playing the likes of Real Madrid, Inter Milan, Shakhtar Donetsk. Remember back to about, I guess, three years ago now, Sharif did beat Real Madrid in Madrid in the Champions League, which has to be one of the biggest upsets in Champions League history. And he was exceptional in that match. So he does have that big match experience, which is for a team that's going to be playing in the Champions League, Red Star, I think it's imperative that you do bring in players who have some sort of experience playing either Europa League, Champions League, whatever have you, who were captains, for their respective clubs, whatever the case may be, I think that's a that's a big bonus, and that's going forward. That's what the team needs to look for in players that they bring in this summer. That they do have that experience in playing big tournaments. That they do have experience playing for their uh, national teams, where they're you know Kanonas and one of the better players. I think that's huge. Uh, he played three years of Senica in Slovakia, left for three hundred uh, k, and that's where he went to uh, Sheriff. And there were rumors. I believe it was two winters ago that he was that Edmund Adel was going to sign for Midtland from uh, Denmark, I want to say. And that transfer didn't come to fruition because he wanted to sign for Red Star. Now, I don't know if this is an old myth or whatever the case, uh, that he was supposed to be on the flight to go sign his contract and he got off the flight because he didn't want to sign with Midtland. He wanted to sign for Red Star Belgrade. How true this is, I am not 100% sure, but this was the rumor... I guess two winters ago now, um, that he was going to go to Red Star. And that never really happened. He kind of got blackballed from Sheriff, didn't play for about a year. And yeah, Sheriff still did pretty well uh, without him. But that's kind of been the story with him the last year and a half. So he hasn't played much football, which is obviously a negative. Uh, he had tryouts for Bologna, Sassuolo, and Atalanta when he was younger. He just never really made the cut. And I think that's that's when he went to Senica and started building up his career. Uh, strength, uh, speed, strength, no pun intended, and his ability to cover many positions. So uh, the speed part and the strength, I think, is extremely important for that central midfield uh, role on this team because we don't have players who necessarily have a lot of speed at that position. Gellar Kange isn't exactly the fastest. Uh, Kangwa has a little bit of speed, but I don't know how much he's going to play in that position. Mialovic doesn't have that much speed. Marko Stamenic, I'm not too sure about him. Haven't watched too much of him. But the, the combination of strength and speed is what I love the most about this. We haven't had um, a, a defensive midfielder with, with a lot of strength since Sonogo was here. And Sonogo spent last, uh, I guess, the half season at on loan at uh, Paris FC, where he unfortunately got injured and he didn't play too much. But that combination of speed and strength from a defensive midfielder is something that I personally love. The ability to cover different positions as well, when you can kind of shift them around. And I talked about um, Jean-Philippe Crasso yesterday. He said that he's a player who likes to shift positions as well because he kind of likes to go wherever the ball is. So I think that the fact that Emanado is kind of open to that as well, where he can cover different positions, I think is huge for the team. And now you add in guys like Mirko Ivanic, you add guys like Bukari, you add guys like Kata, you add guys like Ola Inka. Everyone should be able to kind of move around the pitch to where the defense can't really set themselves uh, to a certain system to shut down a player because you might face this guy for five minutes and you might get someone else for three minutes and you might get a completely different player for the next 10. So now the defense is kind of scrambling to kind of 
pinpoint what they have to do going forward to stop these players. So I think the fact that they can kind of play all over the pitch is an excellent and it, and it works well for the team. Um, the one thing that I noticed from kind of Edmonado's highlights is how good he was in the final third in terms of passing. I think that's something that overall as a passer, he's not that great, but in the final third, he really knows how to make that final pass to, to make an assist or to make that pass that leads to the assist. He's excellent in that, which was just something I was surprised because of the position that he plays, the fact that he gets that high up the pitch and not only that he gets up that high, the fact that he knows how to make a pass, like I said, to make the pass for the pass for the goal, I think that that goes a long way. Uh, weaknesses, not the best dribbler and needs to work on his shooting. The fact that he's not the best dribbler, I don't, at his position, I don't know if that's necessarily a weakness. I don't want him to dribble at that position because if he does get dispossessed, then the opposition is basically going, you know, two on one, one on two with, with the defenders who are left back there. So in terms of dribbling, I hope he doesn't do that too much because I don't want, it, it's going to leave us in a vulnerable position. So I hope he doesn't do that too much. And the fact that he needs work on his shooting, we've kind of always had players at that position who are able to get shots off. Gaylor Kanga is, I think, the number one guy that you kind of look at in that position. He scored some incredible goals with his time at Red Star. Um, Mialovic does have a nice, has a quality shot at times where he can test the opposition's goalkeeper as well. Um, so the fact that he doesn't have one, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I just hope that, you know, when we get to crunch time and we need a goal, I hope he's not taking a, a, a shot from 30 yards out and hoping to score. Uh, so that's something that, obviously, I mean, these are things that he could work on. And he's just kind of like a younger version of, of Sonogo and Kanga wrapped into one. I would I would kind of say that with his strength, like I said, I already mentioned. I love the fact that he's a player who can use his strength to body players off the ball. And the fact that he's one of the best players on the pitch when uh, Sharif did play um, Real Madrid, I mean, it tells you everything you need to know. That Sharif team, honestly, a lot of those players left and they don't really play in any big leagues um, around Europe. So the fact that he's kind of been, been able to, to stick around and he's still very young is a good sign. The only thing that worries for him, worries me about him is that he hasn't played a lot of football. Now, he's going to have an entire summer to go through the exhibition matches with Red Star to kind of get ready for the next season, which I think is, is a huge bonus. Uh, but again, you know, not having played a lot in the last... I would say season and a half. I mean, yeah, and that's a lot. A lot of it is dispute with the club that he had. Shocking when he signed for Spartak Subotica. I have to say that they're not one of the better teams in, in the first year. I remember waking up one morning and reading the news, and I was thinking to myself, like, is this the Edmonado that we were that Russell were supposed to sign? So it's good that he got those six months kind of under his belt, where he could get used to the league first of all, used to maybe some of the language as well, and just used to. Yeah, just used to the league and how the matches are played here. I think it's huge for him. And yeah, I mean, I hope he's a he's a quality upgrade. It's at a position that we needed. The central uh, defensive position is a is a position of need for us. And going forward, we'll see what else happens. I mean, in terms of in terms of um, like system and formation, it could be a four three three, which is something that um, Barak Bahar played at at Maccabi Haifa. So. We'll see going forward. Would love to know what you guys think in the comments about the signing. Like I said, I'm these last two signings I've been really excited about. Jean-Philippe Cresso is, like I mentioned yesterday, he did very well in, in Ligue 2 uh, last season, which is French second tier. And Ed Minato is a player that we've been after for about a year and a half to two now. So excited about both the signings. Would love to know what you guys uh, think below.